the water is is life it's uh it's everything it's it's why why we're here and why we're alive and why the animals are alive i love being out in the country man i have a sense of belonging here as i sit here i feel good when i'm out in the country thank the creator for that eh? these kind of places is where i found my healing you know growing up and just got myself in a lot of trouble and a few years ago when i started going out with my wife you know this is where we came with the uh, spring hunting a lot of walking paddling and you know that's where our magic happens this is where i feel at peace like where I can finally think. I feel like I can relax. I don't. I don't know. I can't describe it. I guess it's. I mean, it's better being being out here than being back home. When it's just more peaceful, I guess you could say. Uh, this this background and the land that you see means a lot to our First Nations. Um, the environment is a big concern for our, our people as well too and uh, the, the animals like it's the highlight of our traditional culture the world's changed uh, from the stories from what i hear of the elders they they lived as part of the environment you know, and that's, that's a totally different understanding from the European and the modern, modern world, the way they think of the environment. I believe that the treaty meant that we would share, share our land, share what's underneath it, what's, what's on top of it. We would share everything with whoever, was, whoever needed it, like if you needed to live. You would go out, you would ask the person, can I, can I hunt here? Can I do my livelihood here? Then you would say yes, as long as you put it back the way it was. I think the, the governments have uh, limited our First Nations. It seems like they, they always uh, make the final decision already. Then they make that consultation with the First Nations. But I think it should be, you know, the other way around where uh, involved the First Nations. When the government is always excluding our decision, the decisions for our First Nation members, that's where we found out uh, that that they didn't really care about of our of our value of uh, towards our land, right? In order for us to have a working relationship, I think uh, they have to honor and respect our rights as First Nations. We're not negotiating for a project we're negotiating for the process it means everything to me I lived it I was raised in it everything you know is uh, about the land you know we didn't have uh, much say you know, uh, for development, even exploration, you know, um, Ontario followed uh, their uh, uh, mining act and, uh, and that's all there was to it. Industry basically had their way. Do we have any rights with Ontario? You know, when they make their uh, regulations? I don't think so. All they want to do is take what's on the ground and be done with it. Communication is very important to, uh, to the processes that uh, we're under today. Everything we've tried so far hasn't been uh, working the way we want it. Maybe we're asking all the wrong questions, I don't know. Or they don't want to answer the questions. But yet, everything moves forward. What we do to our land is, is forever. You know, if uh, we don't do it properly, it's, you know, we're gonna lose it. And 
And once we lose the land, it's, who will we be? You know, who will we be as, uh, as people? At the same time, we have to maximize uh, the potential economic benefits that uh, the development will do. Sadly, our language, our way of life uh, on the land is slowly being eroded. Um, and uh, it's, it's because uh, the world's changed. We as First Nations people, uh, you know, have that responsibility for, uh, for maintaining and caring for the land. We need to understand as a people who we are, you know, the values, you know, the culture, the traditions. To me, when you take that to a, to a mining company or exploration company, they won't understand that. Because I said, that's not their culture. Their culture is to take by law. All they want you to say is, okay. Our territories, our land, our water, trees, our minerals, you know, they possess a great wealth that the, um, you know, the settlers have, uh, have seen, have, uh, have uh, wanted. That's uh, unfortunately the, uh, the sad legacy of not only uh, Abitung First Nation, but it's, it's, the, uh, it's a legacy that, uh, that other First Nations have faced uh, in our area. All our lives we've been here. We always sustain ourselves, you know, we are, we are proud people. And we're still talking about who we are as a people. And they haven't taken that away. What I was told was, uh, in terms of the treaty, was that we agreed to share the land. And all the benefits that, that, have, that were derived from the land. And uh, unfortunately, uh, how it's worked out is, is that uh, it's been a one way. It's, uh, it's been a one way benefit. But now, those things are changing. You know, when industry wants to open a mine, they have all their investors, and the investors want certainty, right? They want certainty before they'll put their money in, into the development. So basically, that's the same for us. We want certainty. You know, we want to be sure for our people now and for our people in the future that uh, we will secure the very best for them. That at this table, you know, as the two move forward, you know, we have to have certainty. And I believe that's the bottom line of the Chiefs you know, that we will be able to make decisions for our territory, our area. So that's why we really need to be involved uh, in, in this process. And I believe that's uh, what we are doing. We are making sure that uh, as First Nations people, we will be able to have joint decision making. You know, uh, this is our area, our territory, and it becomes very important that we have a voice. Once uh, the community decided to go forward with the regional process, we made it a point to get our own uh, community team together so that proper engagement with community would take place, that community members would be consulted, they would become informed about the regional process. Uh, we're going to be challenged over the next uh, while. At the end of the day, we have to be part of the decision-making process. Once in a while, take a look at yourself and you ask yourself, what do I want for my kids? What do I want for my grandkids? You know, how do I get it? You know, I don't want to leave a legacy of 1905. I want it better. All that information that certain company is not, doesn't take these things what they found, 
But another company might say, whoa, this is rich. And they get that information from this guy here. And then and now we have another company coming in that's much, 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 much greedier than this to get what they found there. And we can have all the money in the world, you're not going to survive. We're not going to survive. Water is precious, so if we have no water, there's no me, there's no you, there's no you. What I want for my First Nation is uh, to have a better say in what goes on in our lands. I want us to have that power to say no or yes or whatever the people want to say. We can do the work that we need to do, but in order for the action to take part, it's got to be the people to uh, attend or voice their concerns so that we gather all that information. Then that is a leverage for the chief and council to use to speak to the government. I firmly believe that the efforts to gather information is ongoing and will be for, you know, for a number of years because uh, the tremendous, tremendous amount of work that's required in each uh, of the four pillars. We will continue this process because it's about our land and we need to uh, do things in, in a right way. Our people, especially our elders, they have so much knowledge about uh, the land. They're experts at that. Being involved in, in the discussions with the Premier and, you know, uh, the province, it's very important, you know, when it comes to infrastructure, and social and housing, you know, the economic uh, development process and the revenue. They can't uh, just come and do whatever they want to do. You know, it's our right. If we go back to the treaty, let's share the responsibility, let's share the, the authority, let's be equal. We just have to combine ourselves together and uh, speak as one, one voice. Being involved in, in the discussions, being participants, I guess is what we're looking for. I always look at my grandkids when I want to do something. Do you want them to be looking from the outside? Or do you want them to be sitting at the table? Or do you want them to decide on their own? <laughs>